Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2021 film Superhost. It's a Shudder original, and it's coming to Shudder on Thursday, September 2nd. So for that reason, this is a no-spoiler review. I will tell you about some of the kind of subtext and thematic stuff. I'll give you a quick little synopsis, but I'm not really going to reveal things about the actual events of the film. Uh, I would recommend this one. I think this one's pretty solid. And um, yeah, I'll give you some good, some bad about it. There's definitely more good than bad, and then I'll give you my overall rating. But let's get into this one. Written and directed by Brandon Christensen. Now, when I saw that, I was like, that name seems very familiar to me. Uh, I know I've reviewed something of his before, and I did. The Shudder, I think it was also a Shudder original film. Uh, it's on Shudder, called Z. It's just the letter Z, uh, which I did not enjoy. I didn't really like that film. You can see my review on it on my channel. Uh, he also did the film Stillborn, which I believe is also on Shudder, which I have not seen. Now, Z, for me, like a lot of good technical stuff, a lot of good acting in that one. I just felt like the story didn't really come together, and they had so many opportunities that they missed out on, and it was just very blah and disappointing at the end. This, like significantly more, so uh, very happy to see this. Uh, Barbara Crampton appears in this briefly, um, well, not briefly, a little more than briefly, but it's always good to see Barbara Crampton. I am a fan. I love her. I f follow her on Twitter because she's a very nice, positive voice in the horror community who's engaging in a positive manner on there, and she just seems super cool. Plus, she's a great actress, and she does a really nice job in this, even though she's not a huge part of it. Once again, Shutter Original coming Thursday, September 2nd. So, quick synopsis. It's basically about, about a couple who have their own YouTube channel, or, you know, it's not called YouTube, but, you know, it, it's of that ilk. You know, you know they're trying to get at being YouTube a YouTube channel. So something like a YouTube channel where they basically go around and kind of review things, uh, review basically Airbnb-style situations. Uh, and they check into a new place that they're going to do a video on. They're actually having some struggles with their channel. Uh, so they really need to get some uh, good content and get a lot of views out of it. Uh, and then they meet the person who they've been interacting with, who's the person who runs the place, and um, things happen. That's all I'm going to give you because I don't want to give you too much. I, and like I said, just watch the film. It is worth watching. I did enjoy it enough. So immediately they make fun of YouTube videos, and I'm all about it because sometimes they are very much ridiculous. Uh, I do YouTube videos. I will tell you, within this film, they really show like that really fakey side of YouTube, and there's kind of a point about that that I'll talk about at the end as far as like thematic and subtext stuff goes. But I watch a good amount of YouTube. Uh, obviously, I have my channel. I try to be pretty transparent with things and very honest about things. Uh, who you see is basically who I am, except energy level wise. Like in, in my day to day, if you just talk to me, like my energy level is not as much as it is on these videos because I'm trying to, you know, kind of create more excitement to engage people in, in a sense, but everything else about me is basically the same. But this show, or sorry, this movie the way they have the main character show shows you a lot of what is out there as far as YouTube goes, which is basically a lot of stuff that seems really fake and is way overacted and you can tell is very fake. And um, yeah, it makes you question like what is real with these people, what is not real. And it's just like that disgusting, like super saccharine um, fakiness and they nail it pretty well in this in my opinion, and do a good job of basically making fun of it and taking it to kind of an absurd level. So I like that kind of commentary on it. First, when I saw that that's what they were doing, I was like, oh man, is this going to kind of be like a uh, host movie? Which I don't know if that's why it was called Super Host, but if it was like the film Host, uh, so I was kind of like, ah, if they're kind of just like biting off host and trying to, you know, ride the coattails of that new style of filmmaking. I don't know if I'm going to be into it, but I think it is kind of inspired by that to a degree, but it's definitely is its own thing. I would definitely not say that they're really trying to bite off of host at all. So it's its own thing. They jump between polished film as well as the YouTube style video that's done by the characters. 
Uh, works well. I, I like how they did that integration. That's not just one way or the other. It's kind of like you as the audience are seeing everything and then you're seeing it from the POV of these people filming. So I like how they kind of jump between it. But they don't jump between it too much. Like they definitely could have done it too much to a point where it feels like you're getting kind of whiplash or, you know, having a hard time being like, which is which here. But there's definitely a different style look. They kept it very separated and they didn't do it too much, like I said. So I appreciate that. There are some comedic aspects to the film, and I actually think they pull them off pretty well. They're not like super, super comedic. They're a little more subtle. Uh, but if you get it, you get it, and um, it can you can get a little chuckle out of it. I I believe at least I got a I got a bit of a chuckle out of some of the stuff. Honestly, nice shooting location with very nice isolation, which ends up being important for well a lot of horror stories, but it's important for this story. And they do explain some kind of techie type stuff uh, in a manner that they need to. They kind of do tie up and loose ends that they would need to take care of. So I like that. It does show that they really put some time, well, Christensen really put some time into the script and went over it a few times, maybe even had some other people look at it. So that's always appreciated. Good performances in this film, which does make a very big difference for a story like this. Stories like this hinge a lot on the performances you can get out of the actors. So overall, quite good. Uh, I want to give a shout out, though, in particular to Gracie Gillum, uh, who plays the character Rebecca. Great job. Uh, not just a great job, but the I, it just feels like she had fun with that role. Like, what she did with that role could have been done so differently by many people. And how she chose to approach it and execute it is not only really well done, it hits a large range of things that really helped the film out. And I found, I just found her very enjoyable on, on screen. So I'd be interested to see even more of her in the future, movie-wise. So nice job, Gracie Gillum. Really, really well done. I thought I knew which way the film was going to end up going, but I didn't ultimately. I, I mean, like, vague idea-wise, I had an idea where it was going and was right about that. But how things then unfold, I was not right about. So very glad for that. I always hate it when I go into a film and, you know, everyone watching can basically tell what's going to happen. And it ends up being kind of like boring for that reason. But this one, it's good because you think it's going one way, and it kind of is. But there's, there's enough that's different that you don't see coming that keeps you engaged and keeps it kind of interesting and fresh. So I appreciate that. They do go over the top with some of the music during the like scare moments in the film. That's something I, I harp on because I do feel like you can really overdo music relatively easily. Uh, and it's the instances of, of where you feel like the music is screaming at you when you don't need that. Like we really don't need that. People are very apt to pick up on subtlety. I'm not saying that you have to have subtlety in this instance, but just, you know, turning the volume up to 11 is not necessary. And they do that a few times in this. And I just, it's a pet peeve. I don't like that. You watching this may not care about that stuff. And that's good. I'm just telling you my perspective on it. Solid finish to the film with a pretty good end scene. I did quite like the very last scene in the film. Uh, it does feel a little bit long runtime wise. Now, it's like an hour and 23 minutes with credits and everything. So the fact that it feels a little bit long is slightly problematic. But... I'm not going to harp on that too much because overall, it's not that bad. It's just like here and there, it feels like it drags a little bit and like it's a little bit too long, but it's not too bad. Certainly not what I've experienced with a bunch of films recently. So good job, Christensen. Uh, I'm going to repeat this. Gracie Gillum. If for nothing else, just watch this film for Gracie Gillum's performance. Just saying. There's an interesting point here about real life versus faked YouTube life and how that ends up becoming problematic. Now, it's how that ends up becoming problematic in a few different ways, so I like that about it. I like that it takes this one idea, this one theme, this one bit of subtext, and doesn't come at it from one standpoint. It's kind of giving you numerous ideas of how that's a problem. So it's kind of making fun of it, but it's also making a poignant point about it at the same time. So I do like that. It really actually has something to say here, but it also does it in a very fun, playful way. 
there, this also delves into how odd stuff like Airbnb actually are and how that can go wrong. I mean, if you really think about it, something like Airbnb is super weird. Now, I covered that theme, subtext, whatever, with the my review of the film The Rental by Dave Franco, and I would... I would recommend this definitely over the rental because the rental waste of time, in my opinion. Like th that one had a good concept, but then it feels like it wasn't really developed after that, and it just falls very flat. This one you can tell actually worked out. You know, like good concept, and then it went further with a developed script and everything. Dave Franco with the rental, not so much. But for some reason. People talked a lot about The Rental, probably because of Dave Franco's name. Hopefully people talk as much about this film, Superhost. But I have a feeling they won't, because Brandon Christensen isn't a household name, unfortunately. But I like it. Anyway, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a very solid three-star rating. It is a good film. I would check it out for sure. And if you do check it out, let me know your thoughts. Put it in the comments. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you in between? Because I'm always interested in hearing conflicting views you know like my opinion of any film is not the end all be all obviously everyone has an opinion and we're all entitled to it but I love when we share those opinions because I feel like we can help each other see from our differing perspectives and that's not just good from a film standpoint that's good from a societal standpoint that's just how I feel but put some comments down there let's talk do me a favor hit subscribe uh, I'm over a thousand subscribers now so that feels good but I'd love to just keep going for the reason of just kind of growing this community. Still, people who watch my videos, it's like 53% of people are not subscribed to my channel. So I would have a lot more subscribers at this point if people would subscribe if they're watching my videos. So I'd appreciate that. Also, just hit the um, sorry notification bell button. And then that way you'll know whenever I'm putting up new videos, whether it's one of these no-spoiler movie reviews or a in-depth spoiler-filled analysis review video or unboxing or opinion piece or any of that jazz. But regardless, I really thank you for taking your time to check this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.